Hello everyone. You may have seen a video on my channel before using this Amazonia paper on Stamperia and I called it my one pad folio because I used just one 12 by 12 Amazonia paper pad to cover the entire thing. And I said I was waiting for the perfect papers to make a tutorial and I think Savannah came out which made me think, yeah, this is the one. So it's a very similar um, sort of theme with the animals and things. So my Amazonia, and this now is my one pad Savannah folio. And again, I did manage with a bit of trickery and figuring out bits for different places to get this out of just the one 12 by 12 pad. So thanks again to Intercraft for supplying the paper again. So they, as I said, they gave me one 12 by 12 paper pad to see what I could do with it. And we got the whole thing from one pad. So you can see it's got a wrap around cover. And you take, this is one of the journal cards in the pack. We've got this lovely lion paper going all the way across the inside cover. Use some of the fab zebra print then on the inside. And with this, because we used the one paper all the way across, we've got this lovely continuation of the images. So the tree does follow on there. Let's take this journal card and I'll show you where things go. So you can slide some photos into this pocket here and also untie these two flaps and you've got a place then you can tie, obviously this one's a bit too wide, but your six by four photos would go in there and you can just hold them down by using that cord. This is a folio album, so as you can see, the spine is here, so we haven't got those hinge systems. Instead, the whole pages are built onto the covers themselves, which means I've made a pocket for all this to sit on. So we've got a big, huge pocket behind here. I'm just going to bring this closer for you to see all these tribal details. The detail in this kit is outstanding. And then the animal images are stunning as well. There she is. So let's open the first page. So as you open it up, you'll see we've got this giraffe paper. Again, the pattern continuation happens here. We've also got the journal card again. This time the giraffe one. So you get four of these on one sheet. So we'll find out where the other two are later on, I think. I've used some swivel dies here by Cool Cats to make my closure. Again, it's all tied in because I'm using all my scraps for all these little details. I've used this wonderful acacia tree, I think they're called. to make uh, to, or to decorate the flap. So as you open it up then, this again is one sheet continuing all the way across. I just couldn't come, uh, bring myself to chop up any of those, but also then it's a large pocket then so we can put more of our journal cards or our photos inside there. Again, no magnets, just brads closing there. And then we'll open it up and we've got the other side of the giraffe paper here. You can see it matches the journal card as well. And then all these then have come from the 12 by 12. Now I used some of the paper to decorate from the tag um, sheet of paper but I still have half 
a sheet left so I could cut the tags from the other side. So I put them in the center. You could put them anywhere you want. There's a few pockets and things we could put them in later on. And here we are, here's more of those journal cards. And you'll see how I've designed this folio to really show off these Stamperia images because they do do some amazing imagery. You can see this is where the tree came from here. So you can start seeing how I've tied things together. Again, some cool cuts dies, so I'm not using magnets. We're doing our corset closure. Which I think looks really nice with these papers because it's not hiding anything and it just stops your images from falling out. So even if you don't untie it all, you can just slip things behind because it's these two sides which hold everything in place. And we have got magnets in just to keep the page shut. Again, these were Cool Cats dies as well. They make these closures really easy and also some nice little details as well. And again, because we've got scraps from our main pages, we were able to cover these and tie it all together. So that's our left-hand side. Then on the right-hand side, we've got this lovely pocket here with this flap. Now you could add some magnets behind this so when it clunks you can actually hold a tag or photo in like that. Or what I'm planning to do is just use some large paper clips so we can attach a tag like that. But it is in fact a large pocket so your five by seven photos are going to fit nicely in here or some larger documents. And you open up this third page and on the back I've kept this nice and flat so it's just a nice photo mat but it is one of the cool cats um, curved photo slots so you can just slide your photo in and swap it easily. You have got more of the tag so even though I only had half of the tag page left because I'd used the other half to cover some of the folio we've still got plenty of tags and things to go in. Again, I wanted a page which would show off an image which looked really nice and didn't want to be cut up and lost. So we've got this nice elephant and you'll see there's two pockets here. So these are perfect then for six by four photos. So you can tuck them in there and there. Or of course, some of your tags. So again, the images on the tags are gonna match your folio. Yeah. And as you open up, you'll see, just like I did on the left, it's just a mirror image. So another uh, removable photo um, space there. And then our centre, you now you see in the tutorial, this uh, wasn't actually planned because I was doing it as I went through, so you could see what my thought process is, but it worked perfectly. Now, it was totally accidental having this rhinoceros image, but it was this tribal bit down here actually matched another paper, which I hadn't realised. And now, if I lift it up first, you'll see it's actually quite a deep little pocket here. So when you open it up, our central space has got room for quite a lot of photos or documents in there. So it's not even half full there. Again, you can see all those tribal designs. There's so many details in this paper. And then just some magnetic closures there. Oh, close the left, close the right. And just as the left hand side was, it's all built onto this cover. So this is our back cover from here to here. And there's a massive pocket here, nice and deep, so because it goes all the way to here. So yeah, plenty of room for photos and memories in this folio. So let's 
put these aside. And again, waste from some of the pages then went to cover um, different parts and things. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't finished the back yet. So I'm just gonna put a piece of black cardstock on the back there. And maybe if I've got, uh, I've got some scrap pieces of cardstock, um, paper, sorry. So I can put a little strip on just like I did on my original Amazonia one. So I still need to finish that bit. As I said, it's called the one pad folio because I use just the one pad. And you could do this with any of your um, Stamperia papers you can get at Intercraft. We've got quite a few by now. But if you were a bit worried or you're struggling, what you can do is get one of your 12 by 12 pads. Now Savannah has got it, the Alice papers have got it, and I think there's the Sir Vagabond in Japan has got it, and the Lady Vagabond one. They've got the main pad, but what you can also get in the 12 by 12 is the background pads. Now, the thing with Stampera is, you do get a couple of sheets, which is sort of image-based on those um, journal cards. Now, I was quite lucky with this one is, the tags one, the reverse did have that pattern that they used on the pocket. But some of your pads might have a couple of papers or sheets that you can't use like that, but the background papers are just all background papers. which will tie in with the main pad or become the pad you use itself. The only thing is then you wouldn't have any images. So if you haven't got the main one, but you have got the background one, there are other things you can do then to bring in your images. Now, one of my favorite ways and to add some depth and dimension is the bag of die cuts. So these are fab and you really do get quite a lot. And you see there's some sentiment ones and the animal ones, the tree ones. So there's quite a variety in it. I'm trying to look, see if it says how many. No, it doesn't say, but it's a lot. <laughs> so you can get the 12 by 12 pad Something I'm looking forward to using is the 8x8 pad because I'm thinking I'm going to do a little smaller album using the 8x8 pad and the background papers, I think, just to bulk it out a little bit more. So let's have a look through. So you can see where I used the lions in our folio. That was the left as we opened up the cover. They were used on the right. Our elephants went down that double pocket. And then we were able to use some of the back then to cover some of the smaller strips. Now, the reason I want to make an 8 by 8 album is I think that in itself will make an absolutely stunning um, cover all on its own. And then in the background paper, there's the zebra print, which I can use then on the spine and tie it all together. So I think that's going to be something I can work on. The rhino. And you look at the back of the rhino. You can see where I found that tribal design again. And then we've got those journal cards. Ah, yeah, see, that's where I got the rhino bit, was from the top. And journal cards, obviously this is eight by eight, so these are smaller four by four versions. You can see why I had difficulty cutting into that and just didn't want to, I wanted to keep it together. And the giraffes was perfect because when you cut it down the middle, you have got two very different giraffe sort of pages. That's more of your tribal. And this is what I was saying about the tags. Oh yeah, and the back of the giraffe. It's just a shame I couldn't use that. And the front of the giraffes just looks fantastic. 
So I did need that tripod pattern, so I cut it down the middle, which meant I was um, only able to have half my tags. But I still had five nice tags to use. And there's that tree and the cheetah, which I use at the back of that um, corset page. And this was a page I didn't actually use yet. So I've got lots of circle tabs that I can use in cards or smaller projects. And if you haven't got the die cuts, you can always add these then to your project as tuck spots and things like that, as you do have in the front as well. So I could go back now and cut all um, these little sentiment ones and use them in my folio as well. Yeah, so what have Intercraft got so far? Let's have a look. They've got the 12 by 12, got the 12 by 12 backgrounds. We've got the eight by eight version. Now, if you're not into albums, but you'd like to use these, there's also the small six by six, which would be perfect for card making. Still all the same images, just on a much smaller scale. Um, we said we got the die cuts, which are perfect for if you're gluing just partly for tucking things in. Something I need to try one day are the clear die cuts. You see there, sort of stained glass type effect. But if you think, oh, I do like the die cuts, but I'm not going to use that many. What they have also got are uh, chipboard pieces. So these are great for on your covers and things and making tuck spots by just gluing uh, two sides down. You can slide things behind. So they got um, the sentiment ones. I think there are more on the website as well. They got the wooden shapes, which work the same, just made out of wood rather than the chipboard. There's also, if you're into your mixed media, some decorative chips, which you can decorate yourself then, um, apply some gesso, especially with a journal, that would be fab if you're making a travel journal or even travel journal. Now, if you're making albums and you struggle on the spine bit, I have seen lots of people um, covering this bit using rice paper. So I'd love to try it one day. So yeah, into craft us stocking some of the rice papers as well. So I think that would have been fantastic if you're making an album rather than um, this folio. And you want to go around the spine. I think that rice paper would look outstanding. The savannah and the giraffe one and some elephant. There's a load of rice paper available. And if you want to stretch your papers a bit further, what you can also use are these collectibles. Now these are six by 12 pieces of paper but they're double-sided so when you cut out that lion that one's going to be on the back same with the elephants so these would work lovely if you've got some acetate and it's sticking on tastic so you can see both sides so they are sort of collectibles but of course you could just use them as long six by 12 strips as well to bulk out your main 12 by 12 paper but in some of my albums to stretch paper further you may have noticed i've used um photo mats now if you wanted to have your photo mats which are just like plain um six and a quarter by four and a quarter or four and a quarter by four and a quarter pieces of white and cream card where you place your photo on top and i usually do a doodle around you could also take these stencils which match the savannah papers and just ink through them and that would tie your photo mat in nicely and also you know if you're into mixed media 
These are going to look nice as well with your texture pastes and things as well. I think the one I fall for is this one. I can see lovely photo mats done with this. And these are quite cute as well. Those tribal animals. Of course, you don't have to use the whole thing. You could just mask off and use little bits of it. And the rhino one there. So yeah, as I mentioned, mixed media, something else you can get. So let's bring back that one. Yeah, I said I like these animals. There's actually a mold as well. So if you've got your air dry clay or your resin, we've got that lovely mold. There's also animals. So we've got the lion, the elephant and that tree. All same images you see in the papers. And the tribal masks, which are fab. So if you were to pour resin things, let's have a look. I want to show you the detail and how clear and crisp these moulds come out. So this is just some um, resin poured into those moulds. You can see how amazing the details are. Now, I'm not really into my mixed media as such, but there was something about these masks. Ooh, turn them upside down. Which looked good. So I don't know what I'd use them for, but they look fab. That's so all I did with a couple of these was, let's have a look, it was this one and this one i painted them with black gesso added some pixie powders on them so i used the green pixie powder on this one and the blue on this one and you can see the black gesso coming through and then just took some um gold wax then over the top to make some Nice images which could be used on your um, papers or on your 3D mixed media projects. But if we go back to our 12 by, um, our one pad folio. If you're not already a member, in the link below you'll find, uh, sorry, in the description below you'll find a link to my Facebook group called Paper Crafting with Paul. Or if you just go to Facebook and type in Paper Crafting with Paul, you'll find the link to my group. Just a couple of questions to answer and you can join. And you'll find, now I printed this before finishing the project, so ignore the photo. That is my um, slimline with my Survivor Bond in Japan album, which is also on my uh, YouTube channel. But if you head to the Facebook group, you can download this PDF, which has all the cutting and scoring guides for free. Just join up, head to the file section, and you can find that, which will help you and guide you through the cutting. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you like this one pad folio as well, as much as you have my other one pad projects. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. It really means a lot. Helps uh, the channel to grow and for others to find the videos as well. So thanks for watching. Head over to Intercraft. Find them on Facebook too. Find my Facebook group. And I'll see you all in the tutorial. Bye for now.